Once again, today's top stories. London has endured another night of German bombing. Most damage was concentrated in the East End. The RAF has struck enemy aerodromes in La Havre and the Low Countries. In Russia, further German losses are reported around Leningrad. In Asia, the American fortress at Corregidor is still defiant, but Japanese forces are reported nearing the Burmese oil fields. And that concludes the news summary. We now return you to our music program. Forever locked in regret. But what if the past could be changed? Thirty years have come and gone since the night that saw the end of the world, my world. The service needed someone on the Titanic. They chose me. I was to wait for a signal from my contact, so I remained in my cabin. I left only once Georgia was on board. And that's when it came. There'd be no second chance. It was Sunday, April 14th. Too late, you see, for the Titanic, for me. What if I'd met with my contact, prevented disaster? What if the past could be changed? What? Good evening. I am Smethels, your steward. And, if I may say so, it is good to see you up and about. You've been in your cabin the whole voyage. A touch of the Maldon mare, was it? Seasickness can be quite unpleasant, especially if it's one's first crossing. Since you haven't been out of your cabin, may I instruct you on how to get assistance while on board the Titanic? Very well. Your correspondence. 2,200 on board, and they all want messages delivered promptly. Even if it is 1912, and the Titanic, the moon. Here, a map of the ship for you. Compliments of the White Star Line. I have taken the liberty of indicating your cabin, C-73. Of course, on a Sunday evening at this hour, there won't be many people out. Will there be anything else? Have you unpacked? 
you'll find your trunk key in your bag on the bed. If you require additional assistance, please ring the bell by the door. Good night. It's about time. You're late. Another five minutes and I'd have cancelled your mission. Look at this. A German colonel named Zeitel. He's inspecting their embassies in Havana, Washington and Mexico City. We know better. Ten days ago, the Bureau got word that Zeitel has in his possession a priceless copy of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, stolen two months ago in Paris after its purchase by a very highly placed member of His Majesty's government. The Rubaiyat's a book, a collection of medieval Persian poetry, a passion of his lordships. Poetry. Persians. The German High Command must think it's important enough to have their top man smuggle the lot on board. Of course. Didn't they tell you anything? His Lordship's watching this very closely. Very closely indeed. I wouldn't fumble this chance either, unless you fancy spending the rest of your career in some grotty Midlands back office shuffling paper about. No. He's with a protégé, name of Hedelitz, I believe. The two spend a great deal of time in the Café Parisien, nibbling pastries. Get into the wireless room. I don't know or care how. Officer Morrow wouldn't let me in. See if Zeitel's received or sent any telegrams about the Rubaiyat. You've got a cryptograph in your trunk. It'll unscramble the German codes. You use the brains God gave you. Watch people, listen. When you find the Rubaiyat, knock on my door. Cabin F, 34. Use the second class stairs. You should be set. Remember, this is your big chance. Don't fail. After all this time, it's Georgia. I'd heard you on board. Where have you been? It's been five years. I'd have waited a lot longer to see you again. Why didn't you tell me where you'd gone? Dina hadn't a clue, nor did Jack. My letters were returned. I'd just like you to show up now, with everything such a beastly mess. You must help me. You've no doubt heard the rumors. I won't deny most of them. I can't. Even if the money's gone, I won't give the diamonds to Charles. These are all that remains. My insurance for a new life without Charles or Sasha. My husband. You hadn't heard of my marriage to Lord Lambeth? You told me once I cared only for a title. Well, I've got that now, and it's not worth a penny. The money's almost gone. Charles' bad investment. This is all that remains. And I must keep it away from him. Please. I mustn't talk any longer. Keep it for me. And don't tell Charles you have it. You can't know what he's like. Come here. Don't you love the sea air? Ah, really clears out the sinuses. Max Seidelman, Philadelphia, PA. Buyer for Haymakers Department Store. The shoppy of Spruce Street, they call me. 
You a sporting type? You look like the sporting type. Come on down to the smoking room for a nightcap. Riviera's looking for someone to play a few hands of blackjack with. What do you say? Not much else to do. Not tonight. Brr. Cold as a cast iron commode. So, what do you say? Great. First, let's swing by the Parisian cafe. There's a man there named Zeidel, a German. Claims he's a businessman, but he's got something up the sleeve, all right. I know the type, believe me. Dollars to donuts, he's in some racket. So come with, why don't you? We'll hit the smoking room from there. Hey, Colonel, how you doing? Willie, like you to meet a friend. A pleasure. Hedelitz and I, we welcome diversion during such an uneventful passage, don't we, Willy? Certainly. Willy is at the University of Vienna, dissecting children's fables. C cultural mythology, it's quite interesting. So only a junior professor, I tried to interest Dr. Freud. He's a genius, and I, I... Yes, I am sure, quite. On the passenger list, it says you embarked at Schauburg. Yet I have not seen you with the others. You were there, were you not? I see. You are British. Not so many of you in Titanic's first cabins. These days most of the rich are Americans. Businessmen like Max. Tell me, why do you go to New York? Business. How interesting, considering the British are not so good at it. Me? Inspecting our embassies. Imperial Germany desires to make a good impression in North America. Willi is continuing on, to the west, to conduct research on Aboriginal custom. The Indians, they are fascinating. Yes, yes, however, I place faith in science, not super... The Colonel was saying this wireless stuff's revolutionizing everything. Sending messages to each other. It's the end of books and newspapers. Like the Titanic, a technological triumph. Here we dined in comfort while racing along at 20 knots. It's still tied to the outside world by the wireless. That reminds me, Colonel Seidel, when I go to send you a telegram, they told me it was to be delayed. There are too many messages. The passengers... I am sure our guests do not care to hear a detailed discussion of your encounter with telegraphy. Now, if you will excuse me... Please, excuse us. Won't you call on us tomorrow? Here in the cafe. The lens are taught quite passable for a British ship. Stop by. Willie and I welcome it most heartily. Yes, most heartily. And before I leave, you must allow me to give you some advice. But do not wander the ship. It is not good, I think, on a ship as big as the Titanic. Good night, friends. Good night. See? What did I tell you? What did I say? Them too. Up to something, I'd say. The brainy kid gives me the creeps. What a grind. He should hang out with that little blonde. She's a looker, I tell you. Come on, let's hit the smoking room. I'll introduce you to Riviera. What do you say? Great, go on up. I gotta see a man about a horse. I'll meet you in a few minutes. Goodbye. Oh. I say, what's your step? Are you hurt, Henry? No harm done. No harm. I'm so sorry. Try on my toe. We're the Ghost Joneses from Holt Whistle, you know. How are you finding the crossing? You're English, then. I would have thought American. Oh, my, my. I didn't mean to insult. Can't hold a thought. Dreadfully large place, America. Brain like as if. All that space and all those immigrants trying to fill it up. I was just commenting to Henry. On a white star crossing, one meets all the right people. While we were just chatting with a delightful elderly couple in the reception, the Strausses own a small dry goods store in New York somewhere, called Macy's. On D-Day. Rabina, must you always finish my sentences? You're as jumpy as that American chap, that photographer. Yes, he was just snapping away. Taking pictures of some German colonel and, and that Englishman. Snap, snap, snap. War's coming, all right. Mark my words. War? How beastly. Well, Mr. Burns have to fight. He and his wife, such sweet things. But I do see her point. It is their honeymoon. Why he insists on snapping those photos, I haven't a clue.
clue. For God's sake, woman, talk, 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 like a madam in a Rangoon boardy house. Henry, that's unspeakable. So don't speak then. Yaps louder than a scrum of rabid corgis. Now see here, this Burns chap. If you want to see something interesting, take a look at his pictures. He's on sea deck, cabin C, 78. I don't know you, nor do I want to. Leave me or I shall summon a steward. Tell me, do you approve of women who smoke? <laughs> You're witty. Most men take their indulgences one at a time. Combine them, like women with tobacco, and they pitch fits. <laughs> Pity. Andrew and I wintered in Cairo. We returned via Paris, where we ran into all sorts of people, including that charming German Colonel Zeitel. He had a great interest in rare books. It will be wonderful to be home. No dust storms, no lepers. Mr. Trask predicts a banner year for me. Trask? A brilliant seer. Brilliant! I consult him about business decisions, and he's never steered me wrong. He instructs me to travel on only two ships, the Titanic and the Lusitania. I must stop our chat here. I've other concerns. My maid, she's left us. Yes, well, good night. Let me introduce you to Buick Riviera. Remember, he's French, and you know what they're like. Come here. Good evening, mon ami. Buick Riviera welcomes you to the tables. I am always delighted to play with friends of Max. You look familiar. We make a meeting before. Dovi, the casino at Monaco, New Mexico. I lived there once, in Diamondback. Such a town. So, have we met? C'est vrai. Then we shall use my special cards. Good luck! You'll need it. Care for blackjack? You are the winner. Magnifique. Another hand, mon ami? Bon chance, mon ami. Good night. How you doing? Buick fleece you too? <laughs> you know, you're letting me do all the talking. If you don't mind me asking, just why are you headed to New York? <laughs> Guess we all got our secrets, don't we? See you around, bub. Good night. Good evening. Third Officer Morrow here. I am sorry, but this is the officer's promenade. No passengers allowed. Yes, very calm. No moon. I don't like that. Can't see what's coming. No moon means surprises, as if we don't have enough already. Mr. Ismay, the White Star Line's president's on board. We're walking eggshells round him, I tell you. <laughs> Though that's nothing compared to the creeping about my brother-in-law's doing at the... His entire London office is in an uproar. Tom works in the Admiralty. Seems our plans for troop deployments against Germany disappeared three weeks ago. Tom says the big boys have petrified the Jerrys who get wind of it. Could upset the balance of power. Politics. 
desktop espionage. Bureaucrats. Pa, give me the C. You can toss the rest. Never have. Not since the war. South Africa. Boer War. The officer was a drinker. He was drunk when they trapped us out on the veldt. On a moonless night, it was a massacre. We never saw them coming. Drink always leads to the devil. Then why are so many people thinking about it? An interesting connection. For all I know, it could be true. A man's got his troubles, sick child, being away from home. But I hate whiners and apologizers. Well, thank you for your insight. Have a look, why don't you? Mind you, Phillips will have my head if he catches you in there. But I don't see any harm. Go on in. I can't regulate the steam for boilers one and two. So I don't have time for you. You're where you shouldn't be. Get up top before you're kicked up there. Oh, with White Star, are you? I'm glad you've come. I've got some serious problems with this control panel. Oh, I doubt it. She's really acting up. See? Still working the bugs out. See for yourself. Have at it. There's a gauge showing the turbine's power output. The needle's got to move into the green zone. Over here! much smoother now. Say, since you were so interested, go on, have a, have a peek in the engine room. She's quite a sight.
Excuse me, I would speak with you. You are a passenger. Excuse me, I would speak with you. Forgive me, I am sorry to intrude on you, a person of such high station. I am glad. I have men. I am leaving my home. I am a Serb and they have killed my wife, my children, the Austrians. For that they will pay. But I do not want to burden you. Please, I need a favor. I have a friend in first class, in cabin A14. Mr. Babicon has a package for you. Can you bring it here? I am a stowaway. If I am caught, maybe they throw me overboard. Please get the package. I've eaten nothing since we sailed, save for a rat who is not so fast. His name is Barbicon, in A14. Tell him you've come from Vlad. He will give you the package. I wait here for your return. Your assistance will be repaid manyfold. found him. Sasha Barbican of Barbican Galleries. Now, what is it that I can help you with? For Vlad? He's on board? Please come in. <laughs> he did it. I told him not to, told him I'd pay his ticket, but he was too proud. Such a tragedy about his family. They were with my mother's people. When Austria took Bosnia, they were killed. Many were. With his family dead, America seems as good a place as any for Vlad. Ask Vlad, I don't know. Here, his things. You'll be glad to get them. It's rather late. Good night. Enjoy your voyage. Thank you. I must see Mr. Barbicon. I have bad news. He will not be happy. I am looking for something. Something very important. But it's not here. You have seen a small... It is of no importance. Good night. Did you find the Rubaiyat? Let me see. That's the Rubaiyat, all right. Well done. Leave it with the purser for safekeeping. It shall be undisturbed there. Smashing. What have you learned? More art? Zeitel's no connoisseur. No, there's something about that painting of interest to the German High Command. I don't have any information about Vlad, but the other fellow, look here. Zeitel's titanic contact is a London art dealer named Sasha Barbie. They say he smuggles art, and he's not above selling stolen merchandise. The files say he's Serbian, interestingly enough, with links to some shady Balkan groups. The painting's what Zeitel's really after. You must secure it. 
where or how, I don't care. Just find it and bring it back here. Remember, leave the Rubaiyat with the purser for safekeeping. He might also know where the painting is stored. Sneak a peek at his cargo manifest. That should help you find the painting. Cargo stored somewhere beneath the forecastle deck. Things are thickening up quite nicely, aren't they? We've got to get our hands on that painting. Don't fail. Thayer, Thayer, Thayer. Oh, what do you want? Why, what do you know? Not that it matters. I'm much too busy. I must get this message through from Mr. Thayer. Mr. Thayer expects his private train car to meet him in New York, and I can't leave my post. But I need to send this telegram. Very good, then. Help? Yes, it might be helpful if you delivered this message to the wireless room for me. Even better, why don't you send it for me? Mr. Thayer is a very important man. So send the telegram at once. And when you have, don't forget to tell me. Glad to be a good night. Yes, can I help you? You sent it? Marvellous. I was afraid you'd forgotten. Mr. Thayer will be most grit uh, grateful. And let them think the purser's not doing his job. 
I am the purser, and as purser, I am the one who looks after the passage. Mr. Thayer is vice president of the Pennsylvania Railroad, and it is I who shall inform the Thayers that their train will be waiting. So, if you'll excuse me... Only I'm allowed to access the cargo manifest. What do you want? Away, go away, I'm too busy. Mr. Isidore Strauss, he's lost a cuffling, and he's so particular. Thank you. It is a gold cuffling. Mr. Strauss will be very grateful. Yes, can I help you? Wonderful. Mr. Strauss will be quite pleased that I found his cuffling. I shall deliver it at once. I'm just sure his gratitude will be reflected most generously. Nobody's allowed to... You've got the keys. You're a carter. Of course you can enter. Right this way. Come to visit your new automobile, have you? <laughs> Can't say I blame you. She's a beauty. Gleaming like a new penny. Right this way. Uh, mind your head, it's dark in there. You'll find your way from here. Sasha to the ship stir. They're having a rather heated conversation. See if you can listen in. I'll track their movements. We have a problem, Seidel. Which is? The Rubiat. It was not at your drop point. You are sure? Most definitely. But I put it there myself. What happened? There's a third party on board. An agent working against you. Against us. How do you know? My servants saw them at the drop. They now have the ruby out. This could ruin me, Zeidel, if I were found out. But we should take precautions. What about the painting? Did your associate bring it up from the cargo hold? No, I don't have it. No? But I put it there myself. Sasha, I've discovered a traitor. Don't look so startled. It is not you. You mean Adelitz, your associate? No longer my associate, I am afraid. Willi was an intellectual, and intellectuals aren't smart enough for espionage. Now, I must recover the painting, and its plans. I fear this third party may already have possession of it. And Hedelitz? Thank you for asking. Willi will bring no further harm to the Fatherland, I assure you. Let us plan. Did you get the painting? Splendid. But now something else has come up. That snooty steward Smethels was looking for you. Find him and kick him smartly in the shins. Here's a message for you.
Still wandering? This ship holds a strange fascination for you. Most peculiar. I have a message from a young German gentleman by the name of Haderlitz. He would like to meet you in the squash court. They've opened it for him. Highly irregular, I must say. Especially for fencing. Meanwhile, I shall inform the young German gentleman that you will meet him presently. Yes, can I help you? Very nice. Security is our first priority. I'll put it in the safe. A painting, is it? I'll put this in the safe. Very good, then. Good night. Thank you for coming. I do not meet so many people on the Titanic. It is a pity. I like the English. I wish I knew more of them. Now you have the opportunity of fencing with me. Three-time champion of my university. You are also an excellent athlete, yes? Colonel Seitel believes it so. The Colonel is very seldom confused about anything. You will play. If you win, perhaps. I relate to you some stories. En garde. Allons. Allons. Touché. Allons. Sehr gut. Allons-y. Ach, verdammt. Alle. Sehr gut. Alle. Touché. Allons-y. Et là. Alle. Touché. Allez. C'est à coup. You are a great athlete. The Titanic, how quickly she is moving. The engines are loud here. We are nearing the Grand Banks. The Vikings thought this part of the North Atlantic cursed. Even modern sailors call it the Devil's Hole. A place of deadly surprises. Things aren't always what they seem, yes? Like me, for example, I am German. But I am also a friend to others. Perhaps even the English. Another match? Afterwards we can tell more tales. Another match? Ah, a pity. If you change your mind, I shall be waiting. <laughs>